Uh, how much money does a bubble developer make? Now, I've, found, I've been asked this question a few times. And uh, I've had some chats with other freelancers about it, people who were freelancing using bubble primarily. And um, I mean, there's obviously a lot of nuance to it. You know, there's no one right answer to this. You can make a decent living. I mean, I've supported myself um, as a uh, bubble agency, freelancer, whatever you want to call it, uh, for the last two and a half years. And, you know, like, I haven't had a job. I haven't had a, you know, a regular job since middle of 2019. So there is something of a career path to this. And, you know, a lot of people are probably wondering like, well, how much money can you really, can you really make uh, doing this? And I mean, I'm going to talk, I, I think what I'll do is just go over the forum post that I found on this topic. All right. This is kind of what sparked it. Share my screen for a second. Throw something in the chat if you're um, if you're out there. Uh, how much money can, does a developer make on Bubble, right? So again, I'm thinking about this from the freelancer agency perspective. From the freelancer agency perspective, um, I'm sure that there's more nuance to it when it comes to like actual employment. I know JJ, for example, one of the uh, uh, bubble bootcamp guys, he, he's hires bubble developers. I'd be curious to know like how he thinks about, you know, an annual salary. I don't really have too much experience with that. Um, but I think what we'll do is just kind of go over what are people saying like in this, in this post and I'll, you know, add some commentary on my own experiences and whether that either lines up or is different from what the people are saying here. Um, okay. So hi everyone. I just started learning the bubble, the bubble. <laughs> That's what it should be called. The bubble. It became interesting to me, but in general, on average, how much money a developer earns on a, on a bubble. <laughs> All right. Uh, it certainly depends on your skill level. Mike Locke. It certainly depends on your skill level. But when you have a high knowledge, level of knowledge and experience, you can make the kind of money that bubble coaches are making. And I assume this is a link to the bubble coaching page. Yeah, that's me. Look, I'm first. How did I get to be first? I don't know why I'm first. There's not that many of us on here. So, yeah, it seems like the average is 100 bucks an hour for everybody, right? This dude, no code minute charges 110. Peter, smart dude here, created those manuals out of the um, uh, bubble performance and bubble uh, security. Very handy manuals. Check him out. Kelly, I know. Jacob, I know. Yeah, so I think between like a hundred and buck twenty-five is what people are charging U.S. Um, as a new bubbler, not only would you not make that kind of money, though, you would likely struggle to find work because there's a lot of experienced folks out there now. Um, okay, let's break that down a little bit. I think that there definitely is something to, um, you know, experience, but. I'm going to take this away for a second. Let's talk about experience, like bubble experience. Uh, first off, there really isn't any way to measure how much experience somebody has. There's no definition of a bubble expert yet, right? That thing hasn't come. Bubble is notoriously, uh, uh, what's the word? Bubble is notoriously non-committal when it comes to a certification, uh, so there really isn't any, there's, there is, there are some tests. I think million labs put out a test, uh, which I failed three times, by the way, which tells you something. Uh, I took it three times, but I did do it. With, you know, I, I, I failed it twice and then passed it on the third time. And I did all that in about an hour. 
So I didn't get the, you know, I, I kept I kept getting the same questions wrong. And it actually did learn something from it. Um, but there is no definition of a bubble expert, right? I'm I guess I'm a bubble expert. I, you know, I'm sure I have 10,000 hours of bubble, but what does that mean exactly? I can't I, I know my way around bubble. I can help other people solve their problems in bubble. Uh, do I know everything? No. And that's why I kind of hesitate to call myself an expert. I know you're supposed to for marketing purposes, and you could probably charge an hourly rate if you're pretty bubble expert. Um, but it's, you know, it, it, it kind of co expert comes with a whole set of uh, expectations that you're going to just have the answers to everything right off the top of your head, which I hate. I hate when people do that. Or I hate when people expect that. Uh, but you can, so what, when I say that, the reason I'm saying this is because like, if you're thinking of, of, you know, like, oh, I'm entry level, I should only charge 10 bucks an hour for my bubble skills. Maybe that's true, but that's kind of hard because I, I don't know that you're like, in what context are you going to be able to develop those skills? Uh, if you're, if you're charging so little. Right. Like if you're relying on this as an income, you have to charge something that you can live on. Right. Whether that's through three clients or five clients or one client only, uh, you have to charge a, a way in a way that's going to you're, you're going to be able to sustain yourself. You can't just, you know, uh, um, how do you say it? You can't just be the cheapest person out there and try to attract clients. It's going to you're going to find yourself in some sticky client situations if you just try to be the cheapest person i've done it and it, you know it, it's it's tough um so back to what else are we saying here uh so focus on learning everything you can about the platform and work on some projects that you can show off when looking for work i do believe that there are a few you know there is something to having a portfolio right you want to be able to point to some projects that you've worked on uh, in the past, even if it is just, um, you know, some projects that you built for fun, it just a, de a demonstration that you do actually know the platform and you're not just going to take somebody's money. Uh, I think that does help. Um, with that said, I think the, for me personally, if someone, ha I don't, I don't even care how the app necessarily looks, uh, when it comes to proving, uh, just to finish this thing here. When it comes to proving to someone that you know a thing or two about Bubble, nothing beats a functional performance app that you built from the ground up. I, I would even add to that a little bit and say that I would say that to add to that point, uh, I would say that if you have an app that has users or you have your software has users paying users even better even if you only have five that is very impressive because you took the time to understand the problem enough and you built a feature set around somebody's problem that is the mo thing where i would be like i'll work with that person in a heartbeat because they understand not just the 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 technical part but they have the discipline to keep hacking at a problem in a way that's useful to other people. That to me is, is the ultimate test of a bubbler's metal. Did you build something that has users? All right, so when it comes to, uh, all right, so we've been training bubble professionals or bubble uh, professionals bubble developers for a few years now in france at authco.co i gotta check this out well i can't read french so we can translate it develop your, your applications without knowing how to code this is a nice little site they have here i hope this is built on bubble why switch to no code? Start a business, become a freelancer, find a future job. Cool. So this looks like a French-based uh, agency slash development studio type thing. Cool. Uh, or not necessarily bubble, but no code tools in general. Cool. Uh, please note that the following is mainly related to the French market and might not apply to the global market. That is important, right? So where you're based geographically, I mean, well, is it right? The question becomes, 
it, it, are if if I'm in France, do I need to necessarily only have French clients? No, not at all. If I understand the U.S. market or the Australian market, I can go there too, right? I think there is a cultural barrier, and hopefully, you know, like I, I think it's very challenging with a with a language barrier to work with an agency. Um, but you know, it is doable if you spend enough time, if you do spend enough time learning, uh, if you, if you know, if you have a good command of the language and probably second as important as the culture, you can get clients in other countries. So you're not, that's one of the great things I would say about being a freelancer or a developer in this day and age is that it's pretty easy to get or to, to work with clients that are not in your physical location and your geographic location. Uh, I've worked with clients or I've, I've coached people all around the world, Nigeria, uh, Australia, uh, South America, all over. Um, and I've actually done development work for clients in the UK. Um, so, you know, English always was kind of the, you know, I, I, I don't speak, I speak Spanish, but not well enough to really have a development conversation. But the point is, there's no reason that to be limited. It, 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 the only limit to who you can work with where or, and where you can work with them in the world is kind of your knowledge and understanding of the language and culture that that person comes from. So that's one of the great things I think about being in this space uh, is that uh, those, those barriers don't exist. Uh, as a freelancer, entry level, 150 to 200 euros per day, confirmed. 300 to 5 euro per day, expert up to $800 per day. All right. I mean, I'd like to know how, you know, you, you, to think about this as a, uh, you know, on a, on a per day basis. I don't really know what that means exactly. Uh, like, I, I've never, as a freelancer, when I, when I... When I do freelance work, I don't ever think of how much I would make in a day. I've never tried to figure that out. I more look at it like a monthly amount. Um, so the most that I've ever made as a freelancer in one month was 15,000 US. And I was very stressed out for that period. I took on, I took, you know, I was, I was kind of, I was in the, uh, the, the, the mode of getting clients, right? I never got clients. I had never, here's one thing too. It's like when you actually get someone to pay you for a product or a service that you're offering for the first time, that's extremely rewarding. That is like something you, like you just don't think, cause you just think that, oh, paychecks can only come from an employer, right? Like, no, there's a whole world out there that will pay you money if you're good enough at something or you care enough to do a good job, uh, I would say, because a lot of the stuff you learn, you know, even, even with regular jobs, you learn on the job. Um, so the most that I ever, uh, ever earned was 15,000 in a single month. And that's, that's, you know, for, for, a, it was just me at the time. I was the only person in, you know, pay house in the company. I was all by myself. Um, and you know, that, that's good money. That's good money. If you're, if, uh, even if you're working, like I, I'm in New York city, which is one of the more expensive areas of the U S and that's still pretty good. Like you can live pretty comfortably on, on you know, an income like that. Um, but I was, like I say, I was pretty stressed out. It was too many clients uh, at, at one time. And I had started, I had agreed to all the features that I was going to build kind of at the same time, which was the wrong move. Um, I, ultimately, it all kind of worked out. But I was pretty, uh, I was pretty bit off more than I can chew, I would say, you know, like that, that wasn't the uh, best, the best month of, of, uh, of my career. Um, I wouldn't do that again. Right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't do it in the way that I did it. Right. Part of it is also the question of how much money can you make is also is very heavily tied to how, you know, how you structure your work, how, how what you commit to and how much you're charging are you charging by the hour? Are you charging by the project? Are you charging by the feature? Ideally, that would be great if you could just charge by the feature. Um, but, you know, a lot of these things, the, you know, on average, I would say when I was freelancing full time, I'm not really doing that anymore. I've tried to work out sources of income that are a little bit more passive than that. Um, and and uh, but when I was, I was probably making between like 
five and ten thousand, five and ten thousand per month uh, when I was freelancing full time, which again is you know pretty good. It's 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 comfortable to to live on that on that income. Uh, you just got to deliver results. All right, so again, not really. I I never really thought about it in 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 a day perspective like this, but definitely on a monthly basis is the how I would look at it. Uh, consider the marketing, consider the market offer for jobs still on the French market. I'd say that I always observe developers getting fully booked. Uh, yes, if you are word of mouth, if you're posting regularly on social media, um, you know, wh whatever your content strategy is, I do think there there is some component to that where, you know, if, if you want to get if you want to get your, the word out there as a freelancer or agency and just tell people that you're in the space, it's annoying to kind of have to do that all the time. I'm looking at the shadow in the background. It's annoying me. There you go. I think you don't want to see that shadow so much. Um, constantly reminding people that you are you know, what you're doing, it feels so self congratulatory or self um, promotional, which is exhausting, right? I don't like doing that. I'm not the type of person that like gets up and wants to be like, Hey, Hey, look at me, but you have to, you kind of have to, you're part of your sales process, especially if you're freelancing. Um, you are your sales process. You have to f find your funnel and your clients uh, where, where they, where they pay attention. You have to put, promotional content, not promotional, like, as in like, you know, it, it, it's just kind of like even tweets and, and just posts on LinkedIn are, are, is promotional because you're, you're just letting the world know who you are uh, and what you do. Um, and you will get, you will get people reaching out for that. Even just passive, you know, people will say, Hey, I saw you posted something on bubble. Can you have about bubble or about building apps? You know, I have this app idea that I'm trying to sort out. Can you want to just have a quick conversation? I always take those calls. I always take those calls because you never know what that's going to turn into. Sometimes it's a coaching session that they'll pay for. They just need some help getting to a specific problem. Sometimes it's an actual client that, um, you know, will will that wants to just pay you to do the work for them. Uh, sometimes somebody just needs kind of advice, right? It's not really something that you can even charge for. It's it's, um, you know, more, it, it's more, uh, um, j just like they, they just want to talk. They want to talk through something that they're going through, which again, I take all those calls because that person will remember that you help them. Even if you don't, if the payoff isn't immediate, that person will remember that you help them and they will come back. They're either going to refer other people to you or they'll come back themselves when they ha actually have work to, to give you. Um, Shalice, Shalicia Harris, for example, she went through one of the bubble boot camps that I that I uh, had, uh, and she she I don't even think I ever actually spoke to her. She just watched the recordings, so I never met her, but she liked the recordings and she liked my teaching style. So she referred me to a school in Canada who wanted to train there. Uh, it was an accelerator program uh, that, that they, you know, and they hired me to just train their tra train, uh, do, do bubble training in their accelerator program. I would have never gotten that. Otherwise it was very word of mouth. I had never met the person that even referred to me. So, you know, again, thank you. But uh, you know, that, that's, that's the kind of stuff that happens. It really is. It's, it's so hard to sell to people. I, the cold sailing selling, uh, is difficult to do. Uh, so the the way you warm people up is just putting out these nuggets of, you know, uh, these little nuggets of knowledge that you've acquired around freelancing, around bubble, around whatever it is that you're trying to, you know, m earn money on. Uh, and eventually, like, you're going to get some bites. You're going to get some people that are interested in working with you. Uh, once you're there, then you have to start figuring out how to charge. And that's where it really gets <laughs> – it's, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite area. Uh, I, I hate, I hate trying to figure that out. I've messed it up so much. Um, but I, I think I'm in a situation now where, you know, it, it, it does make sense for me and uh, a little, a little secret charge more, <laughs> whatever you're charging, you're probably underbilling yourself, especially if you're just starting out. 
All right, so you can apply the same, the above rates on a full-time schedule, keeping in mind that the longer projects get discounted uh, prices. Hmm. Okay. This sounds appealing, but also consider the tax deductions. Uh, taxes are a weird thing in Europe, in the EU. They have this VAT tax where they need to pay almost a sales tax on everything that they're paid. It's very confusing. Um, so I... I I've had to come up with a few workarounds to that. As an employee, confirmed 18, 1800 to 2500 euros. And the euro, the euro and the um, dollar are pretty close right now. So what's 1800 times 12? 21,600. 2500 times 12. 30,000 a year. It doesn't seem like very much. Uh, 2,000 to 3,200 per month, although I've seen really mind-blowing exceptions. Yeah, I, this seems pretty low. Uh, this seems pretty low to me. 2,000 to 3,200 euros. 3,200 times 12. 38,000 a year. I don't know. I don't know if i take that job. However, I have less data in mind regarding employees provide act with salary windows. Uh, I probably wouldn't take a job full, as a full-time employee, uh, assuming this is full-time. He doesn't say it's full-time, but I probably wouldn't take that job for 30K. Uh, tip lister, my boy Taz, he chimes in here. Uh, it depends on not only on the skill, but also how many leads you can generate. Yes, 100% true. Um, like Kind of like I was just saying, there really is a uh, – you have to be – it depends on, okay, so how many leads you get and how many projects you take on at the same time and how you just generally engage with your client is going to change, right? There are some projects where it's going to be a long-term thing. They're going to want to keep working with you. They're going to want to keep having more and more features, especially if they trust you. If they trust you and like working with you, there's always going to be another feature to build, right? So you have to be kind of open to charging them in a way that is, you know, within their budget and makes sense for you so that you can, you can keep going, right? You have to charge enough money for you to sustain yourself. Uh, there's going to be other projects where they just want one thing done, right? I've had those, right? You charge a flat rate, 2,500. Uh, it's usually what I charge for the, uh, you know, like just a one-off major feature or whatever. Uh, and they'll, and that's it. Once, once, once you're done with it, they're gone, you know, like, so if that's the majority of the clients that you're engaging with, you're going to constantly need to be getting more and more leads to replace that income, right? And, you know, and that and some people work that way. Uh, but you, you always you got to be mindful about all right, what's the next lead that's coming in? What is the next? Um, what is the next? What's the next job that I'm going to get? Uh, even while you're doing, and this is distracting for me, right? If I'm trying to focus very heavily on the heavily on development, I don't want to be thinking about taking calls with new prospective clients. So some people do. Uh, I know Gio, another developer friend, he's kind of always cycling through these, these projects uh, and he likes to work short term because he likes the, the novelty of working with on new app ideas, which is, you know, that's totally his, his prerogative. Everybody, everybody's different. Um, but if, if you are working on those short-term projects, you do have to be mindful of when the next lead is coming in. Okay. Uh, how many people you want because you seem intelligent? How many people want you because you seem intelligent and in demand? The, the being, being a part on a, a bubble coach definitely does help with clout. Uh, if, if you are listed on there as a bubble coach, it is easier. I know the majority of bubble developers are not going to be there. And I think it's, I don't even know if you can get on anymore. I don't know what bubbles practices is on that. Once they've, uh, once they kind of nixed the bubble boot camps, uh, it seems like the, the, uh, or the ones that they were running the kind of the coaching and the, uh, I don't know, the education seems to have fell to the wayside a little bit. So, um, I don't know what their policy is on that now. Uh, the more leads, the more different salaries you are offered, and the better you can pick with who you want to work with on, on 
which project and salary. Ooh, this is good. This is something to talk about. Yes. You do not want to work with just anybody. A lot of times in the beginning, you know, you're kind of, you're struggling to even get leads. Um, so you, you, you kind of hold on to what any, anyone that wants to work with you, you're like, yeah, like, let's do it. And, you know, to some, I'm not going to say don't do that because sometimes you got to work with some shitty clients to really understand your system. And, you know, just sometimes you got nothing else. Right. Um, but I, I, I would just be cautious in that situation. Uh, chances are the, 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 the client that you're going to work with is going to expect a lot more than they're paying for. You may get stressed out and just decide this whole thing just isn't for me. Uh, so I would say if, if, if you're, you know, like just be mindful of the person, the personality that you're working with, uh, vet that as much as, you know, and honestly, that's probably the number one thing that I look for when choosing whether I want to work with somebody uh, and, and develop software for them is what are their expectations? When do they expect this stuff to get done? Do they, do they expect me to just work on their, uh, their uh, project exclusively? Um, you know, like, especially if they have not built any, if this, this, their first app idea that they're building, you have a lot of expectation setting to do. So just be mindful of that. If you got a bad feeling about this, working with this person, you're going to feel that kind of straight away. The calls are kind of going to suck and it's going to be awkward. Pay attention to that because you, you will get into some bad relationships, uh, that you wish you, you're going to wind up wishing that you didn't take the job. Uh, but like I say, you know, in the beginning, it's hard because you're just trying to latch on to whoever will work with you. And, you know, it's, it'd be hypocritical for me to say, don't do that because I did that. Everybody does that in the beginning. Uh, but you can, as you do, as you do get more projects under your belt, as you do get more confident in the way that you charge, you can be a little bit more picky about who you work with. And that's the spot that you want to be in. You want to choose your clients as much as they're choosing you. All right. And you're going to feel it when there's a match. All right. Let's get rid of this. Uh, I agree with the above 30, 30 per hour to start 150 at boss level. I charge 125 an hour. Um, I've kind of capped myself at that 150 at boss level. Sure. Why not? I mean, if people are willing to pay it, um, it less if full-time employment, maybe 60 or 60 to 80. So what's that on a, uh, on an annual salary, if you're doing 80, let's do the high end first, 80 times, what would that be? 40 hours a week, 40 hours for a full-time gig, 80 times 40, and then multiply that by 52 weeks in the year, 166K. Did I do that right? That's a, that's a lot. 80 bucks an hour. Yeah, that is right. 80 bucks an hour times, uh, times 40 hours. Oops times 40 hours a week times 52, uh, 52 weeks to the year. Yeah. I mean, that's a great salary, right? 166. What's the low end of that? 60, uh, 60 times 40 times 52, 124. That ain't bad either. That is not bad. Uh, if you're watching, throw something into the chat so I know you're out there. Um, so, okay. So, and then there's this. And there's this. Looking for a job as a bubble developer. Experience of over a thousand hours working on bubble. Hourly rate is $5. My God. My name is Olga. I'm a bubble developer with a thousand hours. I'm looking for some new projects, more about my portfolio. You can see my hourly rate is $5. If you're interested, please contact me and we'll discuss the details. Atomic Fusion got at her. I'm currently developing an app and need help from time to time. It's be very part-time, troubleshooting some issues. David, so they got two responses. Just by posting here on the bubble forum, they got two, uh, Olga got two responses. I do think $5 an hour is cheap, but you know, that again, I don't know where Olga is from. Uh, she, that may be, that, you know, may go a long way, um, where she's from. 
And if, and if uh, people need the help, why not? You can make over 100K US dollars knowing how to bubble like a pro. Again, you know, like bubble like a pro. I don't know what this means. I don't know what the definition of a bubble pro or a bubble expert is. There really is not one. Um, but if you know your way around bubble, you can make 100K in a year. I, I agree with this. Throw in other tools and you can make more. Uh, I charge 75 to 150 per hour, depending on what I'm doing. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I charge about the same. Right, buck twenty-five an hour. So that is what people are saying about uh, how much you can make. And for the most part, you know, my experience is pretty in line with what they're saying on the forum there. I know that's a very limited sample of who is, uh, who is, you know, uh, there's only a few people that are posting on there. But it seems like you can charge anywhere from. 50 to 120, 150 an hour. And that's pretty expected. Now, I, I like to also think of the context of what we're doing and the value that people who build software are adding, right? We are developing. I need to get more comfortable saying that we are developing software, right? Just because it's no code, it's a programming language. Bubble is a programming language like any other. If it solves a problem, if it's, if it's a technical solution to a problem, uh, it is software, right? That, that, that definition was a little, a little weird, but uh, I want to say if you're, if you're, if you're building software, you are a software developer and that's what we are doing, right? So if you're going to compare yourself, Paul, what's up? Nice to meet you, sir. Uh, if you're going to compare yourself to a traditional developer, Right, traditional who who codes in JavaScript, React, uh, like that. That's the part where I'm a little bit self conscious about doing that. I think that's why I hesitate to call myself a developer, right? Because I look at my brother who went to four years of college uh, and got his degree and worked his way up through these companies, and you know he's a he's a software engineer, um, and you know like respect on that. And I, I go to him for help all the time, right? For things that, that, that I don't understand. It even helps me kind of just some of the challenges that I come up with in bubble helps to have a broader technical understanding of what I'm doing. Like when I'm doing like loops uh, in backend workflows, uh, that, that, you know, just having someone to explain that in a, in a broader technical context is very helpful to me. But when I compare myself to how much he knows, I get very self-conscious about my understanding. Now, I, I think that where we shine is, is people in bubble or people that you use no code and low code tools is the speed at which we can produce, right? We can do things a lot faster than traditional hand coding. I don't care who you are, the best coder in the world. I could probably build the same app faster, right? Give it enough time. Of course, they're going to, they're going to, uh, um, you know, beat me up in terms of like the, the different functionality, maybe some of the styling. I don't know. I, there, there's no limit to what you can do give, given your knowledge and, and the time. Um, but, you know, it, 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 we're, we're, we're developing software. That's what we're doing. Uh, I have to get more comfortable saying that. Uh, and I see people undercharging also for, for that reason. And I think that's one of the worst uh, places that you can, things that you can do is, undercharge yourself because like i say this does become you get into a situation where you are just you know you're not happy you're not making enough money and you feel like you're working for free and that's when you get to the point where you're like fuck this i don't want to do this uh, i hate my clients uh i i the, the 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 freelancer gig thing is not for me when really it's just that you kind of cornered yourself into you know you kind of cornered yourself because you didn't ask for enough you didn't realize your value at the time that you were you were uh, uh, coming up with a, a number for this client. I've done it. I've done it. Paul, are you um, are you a freelancer in New Zealand? Do you work in Bubble? You startup founder? Um, now, I, I didn't really even expect to get into freelancing from the beginning. The original, the reason that I started working in bubble in the first place was 
um, because I had an HR related startup idea that I wanted to pursue. So I, I worked in human resources for, you know, uh, 10 years before I found bubble and before I started doing any technical work at all. So my domain experience was really in like corporate businessy stuff. Uh, and you know, once I got a little bit sick of the corporate environment, I really, I always wanted to start my own business, but, uh, when I found bubble is really when I said, Oh, maybe I can build my own, uh, startup or app idea or whatever. And when I did that, I was able to build my own MVP and I did get a chance to test that out. Um, but it wasn't a problem. I wasn't solving a problem that people cared about. Uh, so, and that's when I went the freelancing route. And um, I, I've been doing that on and off ever since. I really do want to start focusing more on YouTube content now and just kind of speaking about the things that, mostly the things that I've messed up, right? Like the uh, all the mistakes that I've made uh, around freelancing and in bubble and just the conceptually the things that people tend to get wrong in app development and in bubble uh because I see the same things over and over again. Everyone seems to make the same thing. And they're all, and they're all uh, completely relevant to me. Like I made the same, I made the same mistakes. I feel every, like everybody goes through the same uh, sort of process. So it's interesting for me to see new people coming into this space. Like I just talked to Rando today, another dude that's building out a, a, a learning management system for chiropractors. Uh, awesome dude, learning very fast. He built... He has a, a unique perspective because one, he's already, he's got a test. He's already validated his problem. So he's got a template to work off of and uh, what, in what he's building, he just has to get it to work. He's not guessing at what he needs. Um, and he also built the, and he built that original site on WordPress, which is a motherfucker. If you've ever tried to build anything on WordPress, it's very difficult. Uh, I've tried it. I can't do it. Uh, I refuse to learn it's and he's rebuilding because it's it's super slow uh, and he's just kind of fed up with all of the uh, plugins and everything that you need with um, when it comes to uh, working in WordPress. So but it's interesting to see him going through this, the the, the learning cycle, uh, how his perspective has changed a little bit, just through a couple of conversations uh, and he's killing it like he's 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 ready He's, I told him that he was being too ambitious trying to launch by the end of September because he just he just found out about Bubble like three weeks ago. Uh, but he's doing it. He's doing it. He's like, I think I'm going to be ready in like a week or two. At least, you know, at the bare bones version, I can have people start uploading uh, their course content, which, you know, goes to show as much as I, you know, bitch about Bubble's marketing uh, messaging around speed, uh, fast, easy and cheap. It's true to some extent. You can do this faster. You can build something that's useful for people in a shorter time frame uh, as compared to traditional hand coding. So uh, there is something to be said about that. Uh, it does set. It, I think it does set a lot of. Uh, sometimes when when people think come in thinking it's easy, it definitely sets the wrong expectations uh, because it, it's not easy, especially learning Bubble. It's not easy to learn. It is a uh, it's a powerful, very robust platform, and it's even something like Integromat slash Make. It's called Make now. I hate that name, um, but it takes time to learn, right? And the more programming uh, uh, background or knowledge that you come in with is going to help you get through those hurdles faster, get through those humps where you get frustrated, stressed out, and just overall, you know, like I don't want to do this anymore it's going to, it's easier if you do come in with a program background, you don't need that. You don't need a technical background to start building apps in bubble, but it definitely helps the learning curve. 100%. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, it is, uh, it, it is helpful. The most interesting thing is when people with a coding background actually prefer to use bubble, which is, crazy to me. I got a, a few people when the boot camps were still running, I got a few people run through boot, the boot camps uh, and they were, they, they knew how to code, right? They knew JavaScript. Uh, they knew HTML, they knew H uh, CSS, like all, all the stuff that you need for web development. They had all that. And so I said, why are you taking this course? Obviously is the natural question. They're like, cause it's faster. 
right? The, we can we can build apps faster with this, and we're more dangerous because if we need a plugin or something that you know Bubble doesn't do very efficiently, we can just build it, right? We we know how to implement uh, JavaScript into our Bubble app, so you know, like they they were it, it made a lot of sense when when I said that, but I was happy to see it. Like if a real if <laughs> see there I go again, not real. If a traditional developer chooses to use Bubble over coding it by hand themselves, that says something, right? That is something to make note of. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I'd love to see more of that. I, I look at all of these things like tool. And I think the opposite is also true, right? If you are a straight, if you're like me and you didn't come in with any technical background uh, when, I, when I first approached the space, don't be resistant to learning code also. It's only going to help you. These are just tools, right? Like the, I, I see, you know, sometimes I see posts where people who build on no code and people who build with code, build with code, they argue and they're like, oh, like there's these two camps and they're, they're like shitting on each other, you know, and that's stupid, right? There's, there's, there's times you need code and there's times that you can do it better with a solution like Bubble or make or flutter or whatever there's not a million tools now i don't feel like listing them all um and and we should be mindful of like okay when is it appropriate to use those tools uh, i think that that really is uh, you know it, like take your ego out of it and just what is the best tool for the job i learned a little bit of javascript right because i wanted to be able to build plugins i never actually built a plugin but i did I did take a beginner's course on JavaScript, which surprisingly was very similar. It works the same way that, um, you know, like bubble expressions do these if else statements, um, like the, the underlying logic is all the same. It's just a different syntax, right? It's written differently. So I encourage you, if you are, if you are, in, you know, an expert bubbler or pro bubbler, Whatever that means, uh, the next level is to start learning JavaScript or you know HTML and CSS, right? That the, like these things are going to help you, and it just makes you a more well-rounded developer that you can charge more for. If you know JavaScript and you know Bubble, how many people can say that? You know how many you're going to be super valuable. How how many people can say that they know three? Uh, well, I don't know. Some people argue that HTML and CSS are programming languages. Like they're like frameworks or something. I don't really understand how to explain that. Uh, but if you know all three of those things, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, and Bubble, there's not a lot of people like you, right? There, the, you are you are going to be able to charge a lot for your services. Um, so where was that with the no code? Yeah, the no code people saying that they don't need code. Well, and also you have to you have to remember that if you're working in Bubble, Bubble is built on with code. <laughs> there's a code base to bubble. We have to remember that, right? Let's not shit on code because when something breaks in bubble, who do you think is going to fix it? Coders, right? We are reliant on them. So respect, respect. Um, and, and for you traditional developers that shit all over no code, like it's child's play, remember that this is just a tool. This is the next evolution of programming languages. All it does is enable a broader set, uh, a, a wider group of people to so to create software to solve problems, right? We're not taking anything away from code. We're not taking away jobs from developers. That's a myth. It doesn't happen. It's just that a broader audience, a broader group of people can now solve solutions, solve problems with software solutions. So let's stop, uh, you know, like there, there's no reason that we can't coexist and uh, work together on these. These are just tools. All right, I think that's all I uh, have to say tonight. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Paul, I appreciate that. Uh, I will catch you all tomorrow at the same time, 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. All right, sweet.